Hope you guys enjoyed that footage from the DJI Action 2 camera. In the following segment, I'll be showing you pictures from the GFX 50S with the kit lens 35 to 70. So when I'm referring to the kit lens 35 to 70, I'm also referring it to the full frame equivalent 28mm to 55mm lens. Today, I've got this camera, if you can recognize it, the GFX Fujifilm 50S Mark II. So just to give you a bit of recap in terms of the current cameras I have currently, I'm using Canon's, Canon's R6. I'm using Sony's, I'm waiting to buy the Sony A7 Mark IV. And I'm also using the Lumix S5s as cameras. Uh, but this is my hobby camera or maybe my professional camera. Who knows? So what I'm gonna do today in this video is to show you pictures from a medium format camera and also from this kit lens, the 35 to 70 mil um, kit lens, which is like goes from f4.5 to 5.6. Uh, so if you're like thinking of getting this lens, here's my thoughts. A 35 to 70, if you're talking full frame terms, is like a 28 to 55 mil. And I wanna show you images at Launceston Cradle Mountain in Tasmania of what is the difference between 28mm and 55mm. Because when you think about 28mm, is it wide enough, you know? And when you're shooting landscapes or shooting people, whatever you want to shoot, it just depends on how close you are to the subject. If you're very far away from the subject, 28 can work, 35 can work, 50 mil can work. But if you're very close to what you're shooting, then that's when you need wider lenses. And because Tasmania is such a, like, a very big space uh, and it's wide enough, you can go back wide enough to shoot a 28 millimeter. So in my opinion, 28 millimeter is pretty nice. It's okay, because when I do want that nice landscape, I just take three photos left, middle, right, and you just stitch it together, and then that just makes it easier. What can I say? It is amazing. You probably know from my channel, I'm a bit of a bokeh whore. I like my F1.4s, 1.2s, around there, and this is not a bokeh camera, it's f4.5, which is about 3.6 on full frame terms. But what you do get is quality. You do get that sharpness, you do get that medium format quality. For the price that I got this for, um, you know, they're selling it at $7,000. Um, I guess that's like the retail price for the, both the camera and the kit. You get it less if it's on sale. I reckon that's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn cheap because when you compare that to this camera, which is my other favorite camera, the Canon R6, the 50mm f1.2 RF, the Canon as Pretty interesting but the Canon is actually heavier and slightly bigger than the Fujifilm 50S Mark II. So we're getting at a time where full frame can potentially cost more than medium format. This is probably a more expensive lens. So we chucked on a, I guess, a prime lens like the 80mm f1.7 or the 110 f2, then this would be more expensive. But you're looking, this is around 6000 so $1,000 more for the, you know, medium format, which is crazy, crazy. When I was looking through these images, 28mm is fine, you know. The kit lens 35 to 70 and Chanel 55, 28mm and 55mm are probably my top two favorite lenses. Like, it's not too wide, 28 which is good. It's, it would be nice if it was a 24mm. Um, but that's why you get the 32mm to 64mm lens, which is more expensive. And 55mm is okay, because I like shooting at 50mm. So the 55mm works well at me. So if I wish what this lens could be, I wish it was a 
the same focal length, 35 to 70, but f 2.8, you know, or f4 constant. But a constant f 2.8 with the same focal length would be amazing. Uh, but in saying that, when you go up in sensor size you, and you want a particular scene in focus, you have to increase the aperture. Um, so shooting at f 4.5 or 5.6 is actually not too bad because you actually, when you're shooting landscapes and nature, you'll need f8, f11, f16, f22 to get the whole scene in focus. Which is why when you're shooting like with a camera with a small sensor, like a Micro Four Thirds, like you know the Panasonic GH5s, so the Olympic CN1s, and you get a nice f1 lens, uh, in full frame terms, that's an f2 lens, you know, in I guess medium format terms, and a Micro Four Thirds camera f1 lens is a f3 medium format. So when you're shooting like with a bigger sensor, you have to increase your aperture. You have to be more wary about what you want to shoot and focus, um, which is fine. It's not bad. Anyway, all I wanted to share was that this kit lens is really good. It's not even a kit lens. It shouldn't be called a kit lens. They probably just tried to minimize the cost, make it a variable aperture. But the performance of this lens is crazy good. Like it's amazing. At 28 mil, it's great. At 55 mil, it's great. Um, I hope you love it. Let me know what you think about the images, what you prefer at a given scene. Is it like a, do you prefer the wider 28 mil or the closer 55 mil? And what you tend to find is that it depends. It depends how far you are from the subject, depends how much of the scene is in focus, uh, and that's why you need different lenses. So when you're out, either get a zoom lens or you get two bodies with two different focal lengths so you can shoot different things.